The story for The Walking Dead Survival Instinct serves as a prequel to the TV show from AMC, and it follows Daryl Dixon, who is not a character from the comic books, but from the TV show itself, and of course he's played by Norman Reedus, and it follows his brother Merle Dixon. Throughout the story, you do play as Daryl Dixon, you never play as Merle, but he does team up with you at times, and in the beginning, it's just pretty much Daryl finding out that the zombie apocalypse is going on, he has to go and find his brother, he does find his brother, spoiler, you know, it's not really a spoiler, but he does, uh, and then it's them trying to survive, I guess, in a way, and of course, getting into their own little situations that might not encounter zombies at points, and that's really the story. It's a prequel story, which is really cool, especially since the main characters are one of my favorite characters of the show. But the thing is, they don't really explore any of the background story of either of the characters, either of the Dixon brothers. They don't follow them at all, and it's really a shame, because they could have did a lot of stuff with that. And seeing that it's not a comic book character, they could have done whatever. They could have made up anything, and they really did absolutely nothing, to be honest. So while the Dixon brothers are great characters in the TV show, and still remain good characters in the game, they just don't do much with them. So yeah, overall, the story here is lackluster. But now let's talk about the sound, which I like to start off by talking about the voice acting, and of course they get Norman Reedus and Michael Rooker to play both Daryl and Merle in the game, and they are fantastic in this, they really are. They're actually great voice actors. I mean, I've never heard Norman Reedus as a voice actor before. I've heard Michael Rooker a few times, how we just saw him in Black Ops 2. But they're both great voice actors here, and the supporting cast do, does an okay job as well, but they are two of the, you know, the highlights, definitely. The sound design actually does a decent job of creating an atmosphere and at times can actually spook you out when you're in the dark and you only have a flashlight and can barely see things. It actually does a good job with all the zombie groans and all the little things like falling off desktops even though it's not really happening. You just hear that kind of stuff. It's really good. And the soundtrack, you do have that Walking Dead intro theme song that we all love from the show and you have some little eerie sounds here and there but for the most part the soundtrack is very limited. So overall, I actually like the sound here. It's actually a really good job, in my opinion. Now, the graphics, on the other hand, are a completely different story because the graphics here are extremely dated. Now, I don't think the graphics are as horrible as a lot of people are making them out to be, but they are definitely very dated. The texturing on some of the environments and character models are just horrible in this game, especially in the environments and some of the cars and some of the little things you'll see in the environments. Just so bad and just makes the game look, look like an a, a early 360 game. The walkers themselves look decent until you realize that they use the same four models over and over and over again. Then you realize, wow, they're not even that good at all. Especially since the animations are so wonky that they're hilarious to watch. But I will say some of the human characters do look pretty good and the animations aren't that bad either. And the two main characters kind of look like their characters in the show too. They actually do a good job of mapping their face and making them look like the characters. But overall, besides that, the graphics here are just very lackluster, and I would say pretty bad, but not horrible. Not horrible. And now let's talk about the most important part of any game, the gameplay, and The Walking Dead Survival Instinct doesn't just try to be a first person shooter where you just go around like Left 4 Dead and just shoot a bunch of zombies and get from point A to point B. It actually tries to do more of a survival feel like the title would suggest. You actually play as Daryl and you have to go around sneak past zombies if there's a big horde of them. If there's like one or two, even three, you can probably take those on, but if there's like six or seven or even ten, then you might want to sneak past them by using like bottles or something else to distract them with so you can sneak by or you can just go and you know shoot them with your bullets the thing is is that every gun you'll find ammo it's just very scarce so you have to make them count and each mission that you do, every environment that you go through, is, I wouldn't say hugely expansive, but it has multiple different paths and different optional things you can do, like you can actually go and help out other survivors, or go and find different cars that you can use in the game, just stuff like that, and it's actually really cool that it actually lets you do that stuff, and it's not just a straight linear game. Like I said, you do get guns in the game, and for the most part, the gunplay here is pretty good. It's, it's standard stuff. You have your iron sights, you have your ammo, you have your typical stuff, shotguns, assault rifles, pistols. Uh, you have the crossbow, of course, which is awesome. 
But the main section of the gameplay is being stealthy and using your melee weapons because they're silent. Whenever you kill a zombie, you need to go and execute them or use your melee weapon, either it be a sharp weapon or a blunt weapon. You could take them out by using the melee. And some weapons will take them out quicker because they're stronger, but some will you know be weaker, of course. And the melee is one of those light attack and then heavy attack ones, and it does get extremely repetitive, especially when you don't want to do stealth anymore and there's only like three zombies every time you get to a different part of the environment, which is a lot, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of times where that happens, and you just do melee and say screw the stealth. It gets really repetitive, extremely repetitive, because the melee here is not very tight or deep at all, it's just, hey, light swing or heavy swing, just keep doing that over and over again throughout the environment. At first, I thought the melee was pretty cool. If you find a new weapon, that kind of changes it up at times. But besides that, it is a very repetitive melee system. And the gunplay doesn't really help that out either because it'll just make it harder for you if you fire a gun because these zombies are smarter than your average zombie because if they hear a gunshot, they're going to run towards you and try to hoard up on you and kill you. Like I said, there's stealth in the game, and it's pretty simple. You throw a bottle or flare and distract zombies and try to get to the point of interest that you need to go to. And it's pretty simple, and it does work. And the AI, for the most part, for the zombies, decent enough, not great. Sometimes they found me out even when I was behind something, which I thought was stupid. But besides that, the AI is okay. The stealth is all right. The gunplay is okay. The melee is extremely repetitive. But I do like some of the survival aspects that they put in this game. Like, you can actually find different survivors and let them join your group group but if you have a car that can't fit all those survivors then you have to boot one or two out of there each one of these survivors you can actually send on little missions in the beginning of each of your missions and tell them to go get fuel or get ammo or food and they'll go and do that and they'll have like a survival rate and if it's too high then they might get killed so you might have to like you know get more survivors build up your team and then tell them to go out and the game actually lets you pick the next mission that you want to go to at times, which I think is really cool, especially if you want to replay the game and try different as you know, like different routes and stuff. So while this game isn't really great, hell, even though gunplay and stealth isn't that amazing, it's okay, it's serviceable, but it's not that great. The melee is extremely repetitive. But I will admit, I enjoyed parts of it. I like the survival stuff. I like that terminal reality. It didn't just make this a Left 4 Dead clone where you just run, run around and shoot enemies and stuff. You can do that for a little while until you get killed. But overall, this is just a decent game, nothing amazing, and it's very average to be honest. It's fun at times, but can get really repetitive at others. Terminal Reality, I know you can make amazing games, I love Ghostbusters the game, but this felt very rushed. So overall, I liked it, but I didn't love it. It's an okay rental, just don't buy it. So there you go, there's my review, I hope you enjoyed it, thank you, and goodbye.